okay? stiamo facendo adesso, siamo online su YouTube, eh, perché ovviamente lo streaming che pensavamo di fare su Facebook non ha funzionato e quindi noi ci muoviamo su, su ci siamo mossi su YouTube. Bene, io penso che possiamo cominciare. I will move into English now. Thank you, Therese. Okay. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, good morning. Uh, this is Patrizia Morgante. I'm in the USG Communication Officer. Welcome, everybody, to this webinar, which issue the theme is about how to create and to prepare guidelines for the member of congregations for the use of internet and social media. I'm very happy to have three speakers, but I don't like to call them speakers. Actually, they are friends, they are communicators as we are. So they will just share their experience. And we can take advantage of their experience, their presence to ask all the questions we have. Our intention is to have to give them a time to share their experience and then we would like to have a time on working group where you can share the echoes of what you have heard, but also if you have already experience as congregations, male and female, to prepare and to make um, guidelines for social media, so you can share experience. This meeting was thought, dreamed during a meeting of the communicators for women congregation um, in Italian some months ago, a couple of months ago. Different uh, formation needs came up and one of those was to, um, to reflect on how to create guidelines for our members. So we knew that the two congregations we invited today, I want to spotlight them so we will be together, we share the, the visibility together. Here we, here we are. So I'm going to introduce our uh, communicators friend, sisters. So first one, we have Sister Monique Tarabesh. She's a sister of the Good Shepherd. Uh, it's a, she's a Good Shepherd sisters. And she comes from Syria, but she's in Rome now because she's the communication officer for her congregation. Then we have two sisters from the servant of the Holy Spirit, Sister Ginny George and Sister Anna Elidia. Um, one is in Brazil, Anna Elidia, a Ginny, she's in Rome, but she's not Italian. She's from India. And they are both members of the communication team for them congregation. So they will share their experience during their reflection. Okay, I think we can, um, we can start now. I just pause the Jeannie and Anna and uh, we leave Monique. Monique, would you like to add something to my short introduction? Um, good morning, afternoon to everybody. I think you did it very well, Patricia. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, uh, that is a pleasure to be with you and sharing with you my humble experience. <laughs> Thank you, Monique, because we know that you are very busy for your congregation. You are planning the general chapter and we are aware that for a ch general chapter the communication team is particularly committed and involved so thank you very much for being with us today awesome. um the first question monique is about uh, um why did you decide to create the guidelines because you started three years ago if i'm not mistaken more a little bit more <laughs> okay wonderful so can you tell us more why you decide to prepare these guidelines for your members? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, if I can just start with my first year, I start to work for communication for the congregation. I was invited to Mid-North America 
to have like some time to spend it there for some more English <laughs> and uh, to, to see a little bit with the communicator there, which the time I was very grateful to it. They introduced me to uh, an, the group who is working for communicators and especially for women religious. CWR and in that time they were speaking about guidelines and crisis and how they can manage those situations and from here as I don't have background about working on in communication domain so I start to dream how I can put structure in this office and that was the first things that I thought about realizing it. And it was a guideline, guideline and policies, internet presence, social media, and other electronic communications. That is the title of this document. I like two words, uh, Monique, that I want to highlight. One is structure. And the other one that you didn't say like that, but is pr procedure. We are very used to work very spontaneously sometimes in religious life, mainly in communication. We have been realizing during the last years that we have been more professional and to create procedures, to create policies it's a way to structure and also it's a way to educate and help our sisters and members. So if I'm not mistaken, you also have a, a manual for communication, am I right? Right, and uh, it's not, uh, uh, we are creating actually, we have manual for all our congregation and that all the leaders, they are using it. And now we are developing more that point about communication and how we are using our guideline and just planning for the future, what we will have in our way. It's like a little bit to plan the future. So we are adding on what we have. Yeah, and this world is changing so fast that we have to update it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm interested in learning more, Monique, about which is the process that you experience to reach and to have and to write the guidelines. How do you get this point? Well, this is a very interesting point, <laughs> actually, because my congregation is present in 72 countries. So I went to all the websites about the provinces and units and I tried to read what they are publishing in their website and Facebook. And also I went to some individual Facebook for sisters. And in that time, I start to put my point which I presented them to our congregation team, leadership team. We discuss them and we come up with some point, specific points, because we know that all our sisters and partner admissions are like everybody in this world. They don't like to read too much. So we try to highlight points and mood, uh, put the very important points, which their eyes will catch them immediately and understand how they can use them. So in that time, the process starts with some points and developed to be this guideline, which is uh, about uh, 11 pages, but a very uh, good uh, spacing that they can read it easily. 
and uh, with forms that people they can feel it is related like annex related with the point that we are highlighting them during this uh, analysis of the reality of a congregation what struck you most what are the weaknesses in terms of experience and living social media of your congregation members mm -hmm. so is if i can here we, we, we spoke about confidentiality, but as it is public, <laughs> I, will, I will stay with two points. I think it's very interesting important that the people who are in the field of communication understand how they can deal with communication do not have any consequences about what they are posting. It is related with articles, photos, and mentioning places. Those was the weakness because in our congregation, we should really stay with the confidentiality about listing uh, places because it's very risky about uh, those people that we are serve. And that was, hyper public that they are publishing all the places and now we are just trying to reduce and saying the aim about not publishing where our places are is just for the safety so those are three points that i think they were very important to highlight them for the whole congregation can you highlight a little bit more about the key elements of these guidelines of your congregation? Mm -hmm. your photos and social media personal profile. Right. Uh, actually, I, I would like to mention that guidelines, it's not uh, some document made and that the rule that we should follow. The guidelines should be revised any, uh, every year to see what can be added on and what it's not important to stay. Maybe there is other technologies coming on time that we have to add it. As for example, our last one is revised in 2019. So actually that at the beginning of 2020. <laughs> so the points, what we add, what we had was about writing articles, posting photos, especially for children. And uh, if we have to publish interview uh, in a public way, we have to follow some rules and how we can protect our system, which is a Good Shepherd web, and uh, the security of our devices, how we can really be aware about the security of devices, and data protection. So in, those, in this section, in this new one, we add two things, the child uh, safeguarding, child safeguarding policies and we highlight also the data protection which is very famous now in Europe. So I think I will not um, read or uh, say about the point that we have it because each guideline of a congregation is related with the services and the charism that the congregation is follow and offer. So for us, as our mission is for women and children and families, we spoke more about the child safeguarding points and sharing photos for children and how we can address the the situations of women with highlighting things with dignity and respect for everybody so those were the guidelines 
mostly um, uh, that we worked on them these five years. And I think now we arrived to that, we have a common language about uh, writing articles in any website of the congregation. Thank you, Monique. I want to underline two elements that are very important. First is that the guidelines reflect the charism and the mission of the congregation. So you have to adapt the guidelines according to that. Thank you very much. And the second is, uh, uh, let's say, a, a second category goal of the guidelines is to create a common language within the congregation. I think this is very important. Um, the other question is how uh, did your sisters receive these guidelines? They were able to accept it, accomplish. Did you notice a change in the way of living the social media? Well, um, at the beginning, no, it was a document as other documents. We receive it, we read it and we put it aside. <laughs> So the work it's after publishing the guidelines is just to organize some meetings for follow-up and explaining the reason of creating these guidelines. Because in my congregation, we have sisters and partner in mission and both of us, we are working in the mission and for the mission. So all of us, we have to be in the same uh, picture about saving and caring about our uh, people who are served, we are served. So that's why uh, I think the follow up was very important that we did explain that if we are really having those guidelines is to be used, is not just to put them a plus document in our documents. So, and then we try to follow all the communications. As in my office, I receive articles and I follow some Facebook accounts. So I think, I saw some changes. So we arrived to have this, um, I mean, to apply, to apply those points and respect them as they are also related with the program of our congregational uh, leadership team. So they are not far from the uh, reality of the situation and what the congregation is working about. Yeah, and I, if I'm not mistaken, you are also reviewing these guidelines because the reality of social media has been changing fast and a lot. So perhaps you have new social media and like TikTok. <laughs> who requires a different kind of guidelines and requirements. Yes, right. As I mentioned at the beginning that uh, now we are in the stage of revising all the communication office structure again, and then seeing how we can uh, create a, or update this guideline to be more accurate for this time with what we are facing in the congregation. So I think that that work should be done every two years is just to revise what you have and what you are offering. So we are in that phase in this time. Thank you, Monique. Actually, it's a process of learning for all of us, for the, for the sisters, but also for also for the communicators. Thank you. And there is a question in the chat. Do you have any advice on how to tell the story of your order and its ministry ministries without the ability of using photos, places, and names? Oh, <laughs> well, if they have to mention about the stories of the congregation and the order. I mean, they have to start since the beginning with the history 
And when they arrive to a place, it's a little bit delicate to say that they cannot share. They have to say it. I mean, to be uh, transparent about what you are thinking and what you are putting right in writing, it's very important, the coherence between the two. So if really I arrive to a point that I cannot use photos, I will say, and this time, let us read about the situation. So that, that is that what I'm doing in this time. Yeah, thank you, Monique. When really, when really we can we, are, we have a struggle to put photos, and especially when we are talking about uh, a very delicate uh, situation. So it's just we say that we are not able to publish photos but we would like to share with you this uh, situation. Thank you, Monique, for sharing your experience and you are teaching us that as communicators, we have to be very flexible. It's not the reality that has to adapt, adapt to us. Actually, we have to adapt to the reality and be creative to change it in a way that is a good, content, a good quality content, but at the same time respecting different requirements. Thank you. Thank you very much. And You're I know that there are, sorry. You're most welcome. <laughs> I know that there are congregations who spend a lot of time in the process of designing the guidelines, involving a lot the sisters trying to understand what are their needs. So each congregation can have a different kind of process. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Monique, and we will recuperate you on board in a few minutes because now we give the floor to our two other friends, communicators, who are um, Jeannie George and Sister Anna Elidia, I invite them to unmute their microphone. They both belong the servants of the Holy Spirit, SSPS, better known. <laughs> and they will share with us their experience, which is very different from uh, Monique's. Thank you and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for this opportunity to share a little bit about our experience uh, as com uh, congregation regarding to social media. Uh, in fact, this topic uh, really concerns our sisters around the world. E in uh, 2014, during our last general chapter, the theme of social media emerged as appeal to use them for evangelization, but also with the concern that they their use would be done responsibly. Uh, this was incorporated to, into our congregational directions with the following sentence. We creatively and responsibly use social media and modern technology to share the good news. Until then, uh, the specific communication work was done by few sisters in some province and there was not a communication ministry organized at the congregational level. For, uh, for to implement the decisions of the general chapter, uh, a communication commission, commission was created to carry out a five-year strategic communication plan to organize this mission field to the entire congregation. I had the opportunity to be part of this commission and under the leadership of Sister Marie de Santos, we built a congregational communication plan with the basis for our communication ministry involving all provinces and the regions. It was important for us to go to the sources of our charisma and spirituality as our founder, Saint Arnold Janssen, was a communicator and used the press to announce the message of the gospel. Well, nowadays, uh, with the development of social media, many sisters began to use them, but it was not clear 
whether it was appropriate for religious life, whether the sisters could use it personally and in mission, uh, and the extent to which the sisters should be present at social media. So um, most of the, our sisters recognize its positive aspects, but sometimes delicate situations arose due to the inappropriate use, creating tensions and questions. Another discussion was whether um, young women during the initial formation stages could use social media or not. In most countries, for young people, cell phones and social media were essential for their lives. So what to do? Give a general rule that all provinces should follow, but for an international and intercultural congregation like ours, it's necessary to keep in mind the diversity of realities and situations. What may be good in some places may be not be good in others. All these reflections associated with the need to develop a communication service that uh, would respond to the urgent needs of your time showed us the need to establish communication policies for the congregation. We planned to organize continental seminars and to prepare a congregational doc with communication policies. But uh, sensing uh, the difficulties of the province in finding sisters prepared and available to take on the Ministry of Communication, we changed our minds uh, to an idea of a congregational seminar that could bring together all the communication coordinators and offer uh, a basic training so that they could fulfill uh, their mission. In the preparation for this international seminar, we conduct a survey to map the reality of the congregation with regard to communication in general, the access of sisters to the media and social media, technologies and training in the area of communication. The survey gave us a very clear picture of our reality, showing that the vast majority of sisters active in mission were already related to all of this and asked for guidance. This helped us to realize that we needed more than a few communication policies, but a communication manual that could address all the practical issues that the sisters were dealing with. Now I give floor to the sister Jeannie who will share about our manual of communication and technology. Jeannie? So um, months before the scheduled dates for this first international seminar for the communications coordinators, a committee of seven sisters was formed so we summarized and analyzed the survey responses that Sister Anadidia just mentioned and did further research and drafted the manual. As the committee members were in different places, we had several online meetings even before, that was before the pandemic. So, and each person took one or more topics, made further research and drafted the material in line with the survey analysis, and also the drafting guidelines that were provided. So the draft was ready before the seminar and it was further studied, discussed, and refined by the participants of this international seminar. The changes were implemented and additional corrections and refining were done by a smaller group of sisters from the drafting committee. So thus, instead of a communications policy, we developed a manual for communication and technology with some 97 pages. So um, in the congregation, we have a number of manuals such as uh, manual for formation, for general administration, finance, etc. 
We started the process towards the end of 2017 and in October 2019, this manual was approved by the Congregational Leadership Team. This manual serves as a reference and guide for all the members in the congregation in general, and in particular for those who are directly involved in communication uh, ministry as coordinators and team members also leadership teams and formators. It presents how we as a congregation recognize and appreciate the new and evolving forms of connectivity and communication as a positive gift from God that can and should be utilized appropriately, creatively, and responsibly for the apostolic purposes of our congregation. So the manual has nine chapters divided into three parts. Part one in its two chapters traces the beginning and evolution of the impact of communication on the life of the congregation since the early years of the founding generation up to present times. It also provides the broad and deep platform on which the mandate to organize the communication ministry rests. It cites re relevant references to congregations, chapter directions, as well as to church pronouncements on the need to adopt a more proactive stance in communicating God's word in today's world. It likewise lays down the terrain of the ministry, defining the various areas it covers and objective it seeks to attain. Part two, with five chapters, explains the framework of the communication ministry. It sets down the components of the communication ministry for a judicious, enlightened, and empowered implementation of the strategies and tasks by communications team at various levels of the congregation. The coming from the sisters' thoughts and experiences through the survey that we mentioned earlier, part three weaves into the manual the manifold benefits that the communication ministry can bestow on consecrated life and missionary life. The manual ends with a clear statement of values and practical guidelines for using media and technology in personal, community, and apostolic life. So that is the outline of the manual. Now, Sister and I, Lydia will continue with some parts of the manual in particular. Uh, I will talk about the principles that guide us in the use of social media. After uh, Sister Jenny will talk about communication policies. Uh, our manual recognizes that social media is a gift for consecrated religious life, but we cannot use them in a naive or inappropriate way, as there are several risks involved. Uh, therefore, more than offering regulations of uh, can, uh, what we can do or cannot be done, the manual points to some needs. We need to provide, first one, provide training on social media to the sisters to understand what they are, how they are, they work, and how to deal with them. Two, develop critical awareness to evaluate what is behind the social media operation and contents. It's important also to be aware about the potential of manipulation deceive people and disseminate fake news. Three, encourage the practice of spiritual discernment 
so that each sister can develop her own criteria for use social media in such a way that can enrich the experience of religious vows and do not harm community life, mission, or even spiritual life. Four, prepare sisters with professional training so that they know how to work with social media and can guide other sisters in their use. Uh, the manual uh, also offers several practical elements regarding to the initial and ongoing formation. I will highlight a few. Most of the young, young women who enter our congregation are digital natives and sometimes find formators who are not uh, properly prepared to deal with social media. So the first challenge is to have formators trained train in social media. We take as a principle that we uh, use of social media should not be prohibited, but rather to dialogue with the young women about the best way to use it in view of the objectives to be achieved in each stage of formation. Uh, we understand that uh, we need to be educated, to be uh, responsible from the beginning. It is much more effective to be free to use, but evaluate how it is being done, the results achieved, and what needs to be changed. It can be done in the group and in the personal accompaniment with the formator. Both in initial and ongoing formation uh, and also in the communities in general, uh, the manual encourages the creation of a climate of dialogue and the commun community discernment in which uh, the sisters among themselves can uh, talk openly about social media and seek, uh, seek to establish together what is appropriate or not for their own community. The community discernment will be very helpful in order to avoid hidden, excessive, or even abuse use. Other points like consumerism, individualism, overload of information, imprudence towards uh, data protection, inappropriate self-exposure, and breaches of security have to be discussed and considered in their consequences. The risk of addiction and boundary crossing is also among the religious life. And the sisters need to be aware of that and know how to search for help if it happened. It's also necessary to ensure that elderly sisters or those with more difficulties accessing social media are not just excluded. Each community must be creative to find the way to share with them the information. Uh, to summarize, I would say the purpose of our manual is to help to integrate life in such a way that our minds and hearts are turned towards the kingdom of God and from an inner space of freedom guided by the Holy Spirit, we can use social media to benefit our common mission and our total commitment as consecrated women. Thank you so much. Now, Jean is with you. So uh, I would like to share something about the policies and the guidelines. As I said, the chapter nine, the last chapter deals with the communication policy for the congregation. It consists of topics like the policy statement, its purpose, the people covered by the policy and guidelines, general guidelines, guidelines on using social media in particular, which is rather short, community mindedness in using media and technology, achieving media competence, ecological awareness in using media and technology, social media ethics and etiquette, and guidelines on media law. These are the subtitles. 
So there is an example, there is also an example of a media release form to be used when we want to publish images or videos of someone in our publications or online platforms, including the students in our schools. The policy statement is to effectively carry out the mission of the SSPS through the internet and the new forms of social media, all should strive to promote dialogue, respect and transparency in the content that is presented. One of the points that is highlighted in the chapter in different ways, maybe in the manual uh, as a whole, is that an SSPS should remember that she's always in a public role as an SSPS in her social media postings and internet presence. There is no private persona that can be used online since an SSPS is always perceived in some way as a public representative of the congregation. Like I, I think when I post something or comment on my personal profile, my close circle would say, okay, Ginny has posted something. A wider circle would perceive it as an SSPS has posted something. But for the public out there, it is a Catholic nun who has posted something, whether it is good or bad. So even with the disclaimer that the contributors do not speak for the mission congregation of the servants of the Holy Spirit or the Catholic Church, the perception of those who read or view content produced by an SSPS is that the work represents the congregation in some manner. So the content we create and publish should be useful according to the charism, mission and vision of the congregation. And I like to mention just the guidelines on social media in particular, these are two. Although not an exclusive list, some specific examples of prohibited social media conduct include posting comments, content, or images that are defamatory, pornographic, harassing, and racist, and material against our values as a religious missionary congregation. It also asks us never to participate in social media when the topic being discussed may be considered a crisis and dangerous. Even anonymous comments may be traced back to an IP address, referred to the communications coordinator or the spokesperson, all social media activity around crisis topics. So the guidelines in the manual are much more than just do's and don'ts. They are expressions of the principles and beliefs upon which the congregation is founded. And I personally treat this manual as a kind of pharmacy where there is something for cure, something for prevention, and something for enhancing our mission online. And we have a data protection policy separately, also safeguarding policy separately. So they are not included. Also, there's a mention about it in the manual, but they are um, explained separately. So the manual helps us to understand the digital reality in which we live. Our founder, St. Donald Jansen, would certainly be happy to see us use all the possible means of communication as he did during his time to reach people and connect with the world. This is the gift of technology to us, to mission. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You were very good also at respecting time. So I'm going to recuperate Monique. Thank you very much to both of you and mainly to Sister Anna and Lydia for the effort to speak in English because she comes from Brazilian. So it's very difficult for us to speak English. So thank you very much.
Um, while uh, Sister Therese prepare the groups and stop, uh, not yet, stop. Uh, I would like you to write some questions or comments in the chat because we have some minutes for that before the working group. And I would like you to uh, invite to rename yourself because there are a lot of people who didn't rename themselves and it's difficult to create the group. So EN for the English, IT for the Italian. Um, me, okay, there is a, already a question and another one it's in, in Italian, but I will read it in English. You can write directly in the chat publicly, you know, if you don't want to write to me directly. Uh, some participants are asking if you can share your guidelines. I don't know if you can do it or not, so I will give you the flow to answer. Um, I will read the question from Sister Noella. Today with COVID uh, ravaging many countries, it's not possible to have our general assembly. What could, uh, could you suggest to have it online through communication channels? Uh, when you mean general assembly, it's not the general chapter because it's not possible so, for us to, <laughs> at least to have a general chapter so far. General assembly, it's an, just an assembly without, I guess so, I don't know. Uh, I will give you now the flow to answers. There is another question from Sister Sarita. Do you consider the laws? Just a second. You do you consider the laws of the country when em, evolve the policies for your congregations? There are other questions, but I would like you to answer to that. The three of you. Thank you very much. Uh, we start again with Monique. Um, I will start with the last one, and then go to the first one. Uh, the last one we should, because uh, if there is any crisis happened in one country, should respect the law of the country there. That's why we include a legal presence in communication structure in the office. We are not just communicator. So you should have legal representative for the communication office, which is respecting and follow the issues in the other provinces to see our units, to see them also if they have somebody to follow those issues. I mean, it's, uh, it's very important to follow the laws of the countries. For the first question, uh, as uh, Patricia said, if you are talking about General Assembly, which is just to discuss the congregation issues and discernment and all those things, my congregation, we did that online. It's just, it was linking 72 countries together to think about our future. But till now, we don't have any answer from the Vatican if we can have our chapter online or not yet. So this, it's not our answer. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Monique, the, your the guidelines of your congregation are public or not? Yes, I Could mean- you please uh, put the mm -hmm. link on the chat? Thank you. Sure. Um, Jean. Everybody can, uh, sorry, for, for the guideline, everybody can access to it through our uh, congregational uh, website. Thank you, Monique. Monique, Jeannie, and then Anna. For the same. Sorry. We are not saying anything. We are just waiting for you. You have the flow, Ginny. Um, sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I, I'm sorry. I'm just lost a little. 
Just can you repeat for her the question? Yeah, the question. Yes, the first one was about the General Assembly. What could you suggest to have it online through communication channels? And the second was about the, uh, do you consider the laws of the country when evolve the policies for your congregation? Um, yeah, the, for the General Assembly, I suppose the normal meetings and um, I, I can't answer it, but I can answer the second one. Like when we wrote the guidelines, we had the general guidelines in mind because each country's rules are different. Like when we have uh, administration manual as well, we have another manual called the territorial manual, which is more specific to that particular country. So maybe we have to um, develop something for each country based on this manual, but we have not uh, included the differences of each country or each particular situation. It's quite general at the moment. Thank you, Jeannie. Anna Lydia, would you like to add something? The, the idea of the manual is each province or region uh, will take all the, the guidelines and to study how uh, to, to make it uh, more present in their reality. So it is not something very specific, but uh, uh, something that can give a uh, general orientation, but each uh, country has to apply it in its own reality. And about the uh, assemblies, we are doing it in uh, different levels, uh, assemblies uh, uh, from the general level, but also in the provinces and the regions, they are doing a lot of uh, online assemblies. But the general chapter it, uh, is a mystery <laughs> how to do it in the future during the COVID pandemic. I was trying to read the questions because they are various. So we will dedicate some minutes more to answer the question, then we will be back. Um, I invite you to write down the questions so you can decide which question you want to answer. Okay. Um, do orders using social media enable sisters to post content directly in their accounts pages or is content funneled through a single person who screens posts and their content? This question comes from Ken. So um, Sister Anna Lydia, you can read it directly in the chat. Perhaps it's more helpful for you to understand my wonderful English. Mm, in a way, we are telling uh, that we need to monitor every, every individual sister's involvement in social media. Monique, this is yours. Uh, can you please comment on use of images from the internet and copyright regulations? Do you have a specific guidelines for each social media such as Instagram, Facebook? Okay, I think they are enough for the moment. Mm -hmm. So now we start from Anna Elidia. So we well, can... about the how to to if you will check uh, what the sisters put directly in the uh, social media, or if you need to pass from someone. Well, uh, I don't know if there is um, something different in different uh, in the uh, province, but in general, we don't have such a a place that, uh, or a commission that you have to um, overwise everything that is uh, put it. But we, uh, as a, a communication uh, coordinators, we have the concern to, 
to accomp accompany what the sisters are doing. But in general, we are not controlling this. But if something uh, happened, we need to take a position. So it's why we have a manual also to, to have uh, some criteria how to, to help the sisters to do. And it's also very important to, to train the sisters how to use for to avoid that someone have to uh, check before to post. I don't have uh, knowledge that something very, very dangerous happened. But uh, in the province, we know that there are, uh, um, there is a concern how to avoid some abuses. So I don't know if Jenny has something more concrete, but in, in my province, for example, we see that some sisters sometimes public fake news because they are not aware that it's a fake news. And we try to, to help them to understand uh, that it's a fake news, how to identify it and how to avoid doing it. So as the things are happening, we try to, to help them. But the, uh, the training to give formation in this uh, matter is the best way to avoid it, not controlling, of, for, uh, at least in our uh, reality. Um, yeah. Sure. Um, I do not know if the question meant if the if the posting on their individual pages or profiles, but the, on the congregational pages mm -hmm. or the profile, um, it is the the team who posts. We don't let the sisters post anything. So like we have a group, which is only for the, like, if, if I speak on Facebook, we have a group that is for the sisters where everybody can post, but we have the page and the profile where only the team members uh, we are for. So only um, before can post. So the sisters don't um, post directly on our page or profile. Yeah, so it is in a way screened. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, Anna. Monique. For us, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, we did this just to start thinking how we can create those guidelines. But after, I actually, we cannot just check <laughs> accounts for uh, thousands of sisters and mission partner. So it's just, we are uh, confident that we are dealing with adult people and they are responsible about what they are posting in their uh, walls on Facebook or Twitter or whatever social media are uh, dealing with. So the first and the, the last uh, things that we share with the congregation and the sisters mission partner is what news and information want to share to the world. It's just we want to share the spirit of the world in our communications or we want to give hope and a new vision for our world. And that's it. We didn't uh, do anything else. And then each person is responsible about what is posting because we cannot control people. The second things in my congregation, we deal with uh, specific social media, which uh, we choose them, like uh, website, YouTube, Facebook, and the Twitter. We just uh, try to stick with those things because we cannot open many doors. We know that uh, uh, need a lot of people to be involved in this field 
to just to try to uh, post and be ready to read and comment and answer because for us it's very important to answer those comments. It's not just to see comments. So that's why we are just having those and we have a privacy and policy about those social media. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. And I would like also to highlight the fact that the experience of the servants of the Holy Spirit, it's interesting because they also have the spiritual, the ethical dimension. It's really, uh, you know, um, it's part of also of the mission and the charism. So thank you very much and for, for the three of you. Um, I also know that there are congregations who have, for instance, for social media, general guidelines for all the social media and then specific guide or specific elements for the different uh, social media. So it depends, as Monica was saying, it depends on the congregation, actually. There are two, um, uh, there is one question, no, two questions that I want to highlight and then we go on the group. Um, the first one is, in some congregation, the general uh, council has to approve the request to open personal um, social media profile. I don't know which is your experience in this sense. And the second is, how we can educate or increase the awareness of the sisters to use, to read, and to respect the guidelines. Jeannie, we start in a different term. Um, yeah, like we, we are starting to implement this manual, like we were planning to um, share with the sisters and what is in it and sometimes it's the fear uh, it's the fear like when you think about guidelines policies it's like oh something something frightening or something that says no and so it is put in a more uh, positive way guidelines not to stop not to limit but to enhance um, and in some provinces or um, countries, they have had a workshop on the guidelines and the other provinces are planning. And so that way to reach to the sisters. Anna Lydia? Yes. Um, I was just thinking, uh, it's a process that sometimes is not so quick. Uh, I realize that some places they are starting with uh, to be aware about the, the manual and to try to put it, in, it, in, it into practice. But I, I believe that it, is, uh, it will be increased as the sisters uh, start to understand the, the purpose and to see that it is helpful for them. So I believe that the, it will make a process. Uh, there, there, is a, there, are, there were another point, uh, let me see. I, I don't fi I can't find it now. But I think uh, all of this, uh, when we started to, to talk with the sisters about uh, what is really important, that is important to communicate, to be in touch with people, they are very open for this. And they, uh, they are aware also of the problem. So it is something that um, uh, in the dialogue can bring uh, naturally. Thank you very much. Uh, I know that there are congregation, Monique can get ready to answer. I know that there are congregation who prepare very, um, let's say, different stages in the process of preparation. So they also present the lunch publicly, the guidelines with all the sisters, with an assembly to, or through a course on formation. So again, you have to be creative in order 
to get the sister used to that and not receiving from up above as you know a stone that they have just to respect it they have to understand and mainly it's very important to give concrete examples because there are plenty if you need i have plenty so you can ask me monique um first of all about personal account i mean uh no one can control other and say you can open uh, or you don't so as i said before i think the congregation are dealing with adult people and each person is responsible and the second uh, point uh, about uh, the way of letting everybody be involved about following the guidelines i mean it's just to send a reminder every time you receive an article or a photo or anything to be published in a way publicly just send some reflection question for this uh, person who sent about the about the point who are in our guideline so if they don't respect listing the addresses we send a positive reminder that um uh, what about thinking about the safety of our uh, people that we are safe uh, serve sorry so in, in that way they can be more aware when the second time will send something they will immediately think about before so that is the only way if not the congregation permit to the to the communication office to do training training is the best way so it's just you include everybody in this training and then you train people how they can follow those guidelines otherwise reminder <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Really was very inspired, inspirational and helpful to understand your real experience. And I think it's important. We, um, we have questions in the chat that I will uh, gather and I will uh, recuperate for the second session. I would like now to uh, send the people so our speakers and, and interpreter can have a short rest uh, in small groups. What are the goal of the small groups? Is to share your experience from what you have heard or if you have, a, for instance, um, guidelines in your congregation. So highlight, uh, just sharing um, your experience in that. If you don't have guidelines, you can share what you have heard and comment. This is the first goal. Then if you have common questions in the, in the group, you can write in the chat or you can take the flow when we come back. The groups will last uh, 15 minutes, one, five, 15 minutes, and they will be in language uh, room. So. Uh, I hope that you rename yourself so you are able to uh, go in the right group. In case, in case you are in the wrong group, you can leave the room and come back and Sister Teresa will send you in the right group, okay? So again, the goal of the groups in 15 minutes is to share if you have experience in guidelines in your congregation or comment about what you have heard. And if you have some questions, you can write in the chat or just ask live. Uh, when we come back, of course, you are not going to report the discussion of the group, of course, it's just in case you have questions, okay? So 15 minutes in the language group